This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I'm talking on on daily basis with uh, with many many people. I have a lot of students that I'm in touch with. If it's online and if it's in the events and classes that I'm being invited to give. And many of the souls are, are facing difficulties that it's, it's scary even to just even to try to put a finger into those roller coasters. The hard, 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 painful hours that people are going through. I'm receiving emails and messages from people that are willing to die, that don't want to live, that can't stand life anymore, that cannot find no reason to live. And you try to stay positive and you send a message back, Hashem loves you, don't give up. And people are telling me, no, no, Hashem doesn't love me. Hashem will tell you that I tried, that I was praying, that I was doing it bodeduyot, that I was crying, that I finished the Tehilim. And Hashem saw my sorrow and He didn't answer my prayers. That's not the behavior of someone that loves you. To ignore your pain, to ignore your sorrow, to turn His back on you. So, it's true, we're not allowed to challenge those people and to force them to confront their reality because they're already in a very sensitive position, suffering a lot and experiencing very, very hard, harsh pain. But slowly, slowly, in my relationship with those guys, I'm able to help them understand that deep, deep inside those challenges and the difficulties, Hashem is hiding Himself. And really, Hashem is not ignoring. And He's choosing a certain path, a certain way, a certain supervision on those people that they will feel that they are being ignored, that they will feel that they are being rejected, and it's very painful. It's sometimes, like we said, you feel you want to die. You feel like it's the end of the world for you. You can feel no, no, no satisfaction in life, no joy, no, no, no pleasure. It can be very, very painful. But, It's written on the main example that we received from heaven on the man Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, that he asked from Hashem to see his face. He asked Hashem, Teach me your ways. I want to understand what you're doing. Sometimes a person is doing good, and he feels like he's being punished on that good. I heard once a person that said, it was a, you know, those bitter jokes. He said, you cannot do something good and not being punished on it. It's not, it's not an option in this world that you will do good and not be punished on it. So, Moses asked Hashem, how can it be that people are doing good and they're suffering? And there are evil people that are doing horrible things in this world and they're enjoying life. At least that's how it seems. So he said, he asked Hashem, please, teach me your ways. What are you doing with people? So it's written that Hashem Barach turned his back, his face away from him and shown him his back and show him the back tie not of his tefillin. So Moshe is asking from Hashem, Hashem, I want to see your face. 
And Hashem is turning away, and Moshe can see the back of Hashem. What's that? That's exactly what we're experiencing in our lives. That we want closeness to the Creator, that we're working hard on work on our attributes, trying to fix ourselves, fixing our manners, working on our patience, trying to, to, to break our lusts and our bad manners, trying to be nicer, to have more faith, to force ourselves and to teach ourselves certain teachings and wisdom that might help us to fix ourselves, like learning Torah. And it might be in the holy language that might be very like foreign and, and awkward for us to learn Hebrew, holy language, ancient scripts, very hard. And we still try. Yesterday in class I said, just a simple example, you hold the cedar in your hands and you're new in that. You don't know how to pray. And in the top of the page it's written, the evening prayer for Saturday, for Shabbos. And you're holding the Sidhu, and you see that it's written on the top of the page, and you don't know what to do. And you should just read it. And it's written that this is the prayer for the morning, for the first day of the month, for Rosh Chodesh. And you came today in Rosh Chodesh, in the first day of the month, in the morning, to the synagogue, and you open the Sidhu, and you don't know what to do with it. It's a certain block that you have in front of your eyes, that you don't know how to deal with the holidays, with Saturdays, with the mitzvot. And people are struggling, and people are trying, and people are, are, are sacrificing themselves as much as they can, and they don't see no results. The verse is saying in Tehillim, Lamavet totzaot, results you see after death. You see results only after 120. And sometimes it's even worse. Sometimes even a person like Moses is going to Hashem and he tells him, listen, I realize I don't understand what's going on in this world. I see that things here in this world are going in different directions. I cannot put my finger on it. My logic is not wide and, and, and pure and clean enough to grab the whole picture. I don't understand. Please teach me. And then, the result of that act of honesty, of humility, of a learner, of a humble person that wants to learn, that is admitting, I don't get it. I want to learn, please teach me. The immediate res re result of that act of humility is that Hashem is turning away from Moses and walks away. Now Moses, Moshe Rabbeinu, stays with that figure of Hashem's tefillin, tie, while Hashem is disappearing from his eyes. Hashem is walking away from him. And Moshe left with that tie of tefillin, and Hashem is going away now. What is the right conclusion from that situation? Moshe took out of it 13 midot of kindness. That Hashem, He is Kel, Rachum, Vechanun, Erech Apayim, Verav Chesed, Vehemet, and on and on and on. 13 ways of kindness. That's what He learned. That's what He took out from that situation. When He saw that Hashem decided to turn His face away from Him and to give Him His back, from that he learned that Hashem is kind, and that Hashem is good, and that Hashem is loving, and that Hashem got patience, and that Hashem is generous, and that Hashem is sweet and adorable, and whatever good things that you can find. Thirteen attributes of kindness. Thirteen ways of revealing of good Moshe recognized in that act that we would feel rejected and insulted and shamed by. If we are coming to Hashem and asking Hashem, please teach me, I want to know, and we see that Hashem is walking away from us, we feel rejected, we feel sad, we feel depressed, we fall into depression, we fall into despair. But the truth is 
that we should learn from the acts of Hashem only about His kindness. How can you find kindness in such a dark place like this world that we're living in? Only if you, and it sounds like a joke, only if you're judging Hashem favorably. And it's a joke. To say that thing, it's a joke. But if we will really check ourselves, we will see that immediately, in every situation, we have foreign things and bad things to say about Hashem. In every situation that you define the creation as bad or evil or cruel or whatever, dark, you say something about the Creator that made that creation. You have a negative opinion about the one that made the world to be exactly as it is. Because who Amar Vayehi? Hashem said, and that's why the world looks exactly like that it is. With the garbage cans, and with the traffic, and with the issues, and with the bills, and with the mortgages, and with the illnesses, and with the weaknesses, and the exiles, and the wars, and the bombings, and the, the threatens, and all the difficulties, Hashem is doing it. It's not that it's Hashem's decision from the... Hashem is renewing the world in every moment and moment. Even the worst decrees. Even the worst situations that we're experiencing in life are handmade of Hashem. Because nothing can take place in His creation unless He's deciding it. Now, to judge Him favorably on such horrific things that took place in this lifetime or in different generations might be even worse than today, we don't know. On all the sorrow, on all the pain, on children being molested, women being raped, boys, men being raped, people being executed in cruel, vicious ways. How can we judge Hashem favorably? Those are <coughs> questions that we are dealing with even if we are too orthodox, too firm to ask those questions. Inside of our mind, inside of our heart, we are dealing with those hard questions like what's going on in this world? How can it be? And we feel that Hashem, the Creator, is abandoning us. He's showing us His back and walking away. But Moshe Rabbeinu, this righteous man, is able to see through those curtains and to recognize the kindness of Hashem on those situations, inside those situations. Now, first of all, I want to warn you on a very, very important warning. All of those teachings, all of that wisdom that we are opening today is aimed for you as an individual. You should, if you want, if you're willing to, if you're ready, you can learn and you should learn that topic, that kind of wisdom for yourself, but not for someone else. What do I mean? If now someone else is suffering, and he's coming and crying to you, you cannot tell him, listen, it's all for the best. It's all so good. Hashem did it. Because he came to you <coughs> to seek for mercy. Now, if you will show him the <coughs> shiny face of Hashem, in your mindset, by your opinion, you will reject him with those words. He is not able to feel that. He wants to be loved right now. He wants to feel compassion. He wants to feel that you can understand Him, that you relate to His pain and sorrow. But for yourself, if you feel that you are able to work on yourself, that you will not fall to that pit of darkness, to that black bitterness of sorrow, and you want to strengthen yourself in faith, you're welcome. That's an amazing thing. But on your friend, on your beloved ones, on those people that are seeking for love and compassion, there is only one thing that we allow to give them, and it's love. Because for them, if you will give them a different opinion, except of, yes, you are poor, yes, I understand you, for them immediately it will be interpreted as a rebuke as a rejection. They will feel rejected and we don't want that. We want to help everyone. 
If you feel that that person is asking, that he's also seeking for answers, and you see that he's got some strength and power, you can invite him to search. You can tell him from your life experience, share from your wisdom on, based on your achievements, what you have done in your life that brought you to higher levels, to develop, to grow. And by sharing that, you will be a role model for him, a good example for him to learn from you. You can teach him because of your life experience, because of your success on facing your challenges in a certain way. But to tell him that he is not seeing right, that he is not recognizing the light, it's a very cruel act and we're not allowed to do that. That was the warning, very important one. Thousands and thousands of people are being rejected by that mistake of other people telling them, listen, it's all good, everything is perfect. Immediately that poor guy feels that he is not able to stand in that test and that you are better than him if he buy your nonsense, if he buy your shtuyot that you just spoke, if he will buy those nonsense, he will feel humiliated by you and rejected and not worthy and he will give up and it will be that person's fault. It will be our fault and we don't want to fall into that mistake. That's why for other people we're showing compassion and love and deep understanding. You want to help him, pray for him, show him <laughs> on yourself that there is hope. Tell him that you made it out from many challenges and difficulties and if you will see that he's waking up, great, give him a hand and walk with him one step after the other according to his ability and his power. Now, about Moses, where did he found that power to go and to bring out those fantastic conclusions by a simple rejection? You ask from someone, give me an explanation, and he gives you his back and walks away from you. And by that you're learning that he's kind and patient and loving and wonderful. How do you do that? Moses, Isha Elohim, the man of God, he is a person that is able to go into the darkness, into the fire, into the cloud between the lightnings and thunders, the boulders that are falling from Mount Sinai. Why? Because he knows that Hashem is over there. Kishama Elohim. He is seeking the Creator with all of his essence. He doesn't have anything else in his mind except of finding the truth. That's why nothing in this world is confusing him. Because his desire is only one, to learn. When we want to learn, we're learning from every situation. When we are here for pleasure, for joy, for satisfaction, for honor, for success, for whatever, then we're being rejected when we're not receiving our desire. But if our desire is to learn, is to humble ourselves, now, no matter what you're going to go through in life, you will find that because you can learn from every situation. And to humble yourself from your failures and from rejections, it's the easiest thing in the world. The only thing that is making the difference between a person that is being rejected by the rebuke and by the challenges and by the difficulties and the darkness of this world to a person that doesn't being rejected and only developing and growing only one thing only one difference their mindset their desire now again this learning is about ourselves because you cannot criticize another person and say about him oh he's now being rejected because he's following his desires or his lusts you don't know what is bringing your friend to follow his fears Maybe he went through certain things in life that are still holding him back and he's so terrified and so scared and so traumatized that he's not able to deal with things that for you, you feel that they are easy, that they are like not a challenge at all. 
you cannot understand your friend until you will stand in his position having his life experience and we don't want that we're barely managing with our own so even a person that it seems to us that he's so successful and so great you don't know what he's going through in his mind and he might suffer 10 times more than you and he looks like a million dollar walking and you don't know what he's going through in his mind so again we're learning that on ourselves when we want in our individual private lives when we want to find the right way how not to feel rejected by the rebukes how not to give up because of the difficulties of the challenges that we're facing in life we must focus our mind on the purpose of our being here in this universe we need when I'm taking off my jacket it's a different story prepare yourself fasten your seat belts now we're starting when a person is working with himself once I, I I, I, I made a video live and I, I, I told a dream of mine and I, I shared and I, I said in that in the beginning I, I was like talking to the friends to the camera and I said you know I'm gonna share with you I'm gonna tell you my dream and I'm, I'm telling you that only because I'm so generous and I'm continuing and I'm like immediately after declaring on myself that I'm so generous I'm moving to the next step and just telling the story and my wife she watched that video after and she tells me are you serious are you crazy or what like you are serious you are sharing and you think about yourself that you're generous like are you sick in your mind so I'll tell you I'm opening the cards Moses wrote on himself in the Bible that Aish Moshe he was the man Moses he was the most humble person in the world and while he was writing those words about himself he didn't felt no arrogance about it he wasn't proud on that thing at all why because he knew that it was the reality that Hashem saw he was writing only Hashem's will so again like I said before it depends in your mindset when you have a certain mindset and you check yourself and you see that your intention is good in that moment you can express your heart your emotions your feelings your thoughts without being terrified and scared how those words will be interpreted what other people will think about you how people if you feel generous now sharing your thoughts really that's your feeling there is no problem with it when you are honest the work that you need to do in your life is not to play humble, to act like you're humble or righteous. You need to check yourself. Where are you holding in the level of truth? Are you humble right now? Are you being honest right now? Now, if you are being honest, you can go and open the sea in front of thousands of people and there's no problem with it. You don't need to hide and to be a hidden righteous man. No, it wasn't me. It was Aaron. No, it wasn't Aaron. It was Hushim Ben Dan. No, no, no. You need to be honest and to be who that you are and not to be scared from that when you know that you're honest. As long as you have a purpose in life, as long as you know that you're working on yourself to work on yourself to become a better person, as long as you know that the only reason that you do your things is because you want to benefit to other people's life, you want to help other people, you want to show, you want to share, you are being generous, that's who that you are. There's no problem with that. You're allowed to be that. Our low self-esteem is the result of negative thoughts and negativity and criticism that we received for so many years in our lives that destroyed our our real being and covered us with darkness like we cannot be who that we are but you are good but your soul is kind but it makes you happy to see people smiling and laughing to see flower grow it makes you happy you happy to see good things flowing in the world so what's the problem with you being good now exactly like that 
we must focus our mind on the purpose of our creation to check and to find the real nature of our spirit of our soul and to let it shine now if your soul is telling you don't give up so don't give up and if your spirit tells you go to the beach go to the far east go to wonderland go to wonderland don't be afraid if you have an inner connection to your soul and you're listening and you know that your intentions are pure and you know that the reason that you're acting in a certain way is because that you want to do good you must work on your fears and on your faith in yourself to become that good person that you are from inside that your soul is calling you to be you must believe in yourself and to reveal and to uncover the amazing potential that the Creator treasured inside of you and you are unique and different and you are who you are and you're not no one else you're not from you're not Orthodox you're not Haredi you're not Hasid and you're also not whatever other people thinks about you you're only one thing and it's who that you really are and sometimes we're not even aware to that one that we are but the main focus the main purpose of our lives is to understand everyone for himself who am I what is the purpose of my life now when you find it you're not allowed to walk away from it no matter what no matter who will stand in front of you when King David realized that he's King David the king of Israel was standing in front of him his name was Shaul HaMelech Shaul he was the king and, and Shmuel the prophet already crowned King David now King David is a hidden king that no one's allowed to know about him at all someone crowned him a prophet came to him took him to the side crowned him told him you're the king of Israel now all of that nation of Israel under the kingship of Shaul are his enemies who are you betraying the kingship you're the one that is digging under the king we have a king and he's fighting for us and we have a war against the Plishtim and we're doing this and we're doing that and there are ministers and governments and whatever treasures money power politics everything was there now who are you a crazy punk from the streets and his shepherd just came so he killed Goliath so what who is he some kid he will come and change the rules he will come and change everything the orthodox method was so stable in those days the fruit community was so tight and strict in those days you can't imagine but he had only one thing in his heart he couldn't care less what other people think he had Hashem's will in front of his eyes Shiviti Hashem Nenegditami he had a goal he had a purpose he had Hashem not because that he was a prophet or because that he was righteous just because that he was honest he was a simple Jew he was a believer he just had simple faith and he walked with it and he was threatened and he was being chased and he was terrified and he had to run to the mountains and to the valleys and to the desert and to hide in a cave and in a pit and in the darkness and to be threatened to be executed and people tried to stab him and to shoot him and to kill him and whatever and all of those things while he is just trying to be who that he is and that's your war and that's your mission and you don't need to be King David you need to be yourself also King David if the purpose of his life was to be a shepherd he would be a shepherd that's what he's saying to Hashem I was humble when I was a shepherd and I was humble when I was a king because I was humble so Hashem chose him to become a king okay so great so he can be a king not every one of us can be a king not every one of us are ready to be a king for you if you're not a potential king it will be a disaster if someone will put you in the crown uh, with the crown for you it will be a nightmare you won't find happiness you know what makes you happy you know what makes you sa satisfied from life so you need to desire those good things that satisfies you 
that are filling you, that are answering your doubts and your questions, that are answering your thoughts. So you need to find your true self and to go with that all the way. And like I'm saying many times about the redemption, when the redemption will take place in our days, in our lifetime, in this world, you must understand the prosperity, the joy, the comfort, the satisfaction will cover the universe. Not only the Jews, not only the Hasidim, not only Hasidim Breslev or Chabad or Biale or I don't know what. Not only a certain group will enjoy the light of Hashem. The light of Hashem is the light that is shining upon the wide world. It will be a light that will be welcoming the nations all to come together to the temple, to Jerusalem, and they will all know Hashem and all going to know how to call Him in His name, and they will all be welcome to the house of Hashem. Because His house will be called the house of prayer to all nations. So the peace and love and harmony will cover the world. Now, it won't be only for the people, for the nations, for human beings. It will be also between the animals. Because the tigers will be friends with the deers, and the wolves will be friends with the squirrels. And it, there will be peace. No more predators, no more anger, no more bad attributes, no more cruelty, no more bloodshed. Finish. Only happiness and joy between everyone. Flowers, bushes, trees. All the creation will glow from the light of Hashem. Now, in that situation, you will have to have people to be friends with the dolphins. You will have to have people to be friends with the bears. You will have to have people that will be in touch with the birds. You'll have to have people that will work in the stores and will supply the food. And you will have to have people because Olam Keminagonoheg, the world will continue as it is just only in a positive way. From the positive and good side of it with no negativity, with no sadness, with no illnesses, with no weaknesses, with no darkness. But the system will continue working like that. You think you won't have a car, you won't drive. Maybe it will be a better improved vehicles. Maybe, pr probably. Won't damage the ozone, no smoke, no, no gas. Wonderful. Everything will fit to his right place, but the world will continue. So you're going to have to have people that are teaching in kindergartens and in schools, and you're going to have to have people that are working in all kinds of industry, and the world will function. Now, which position you will hold in time of redemption? The same position that you're holding today. Maybe it will be improved somehow, but you will be the one that you are also in time of redemption. You won't be suddenly the king of Israel or the prophet is going on the mountain. It's not you. Who are you? You know, I'm a nice person. I'm a kind person. I like to help people. You're going to help people in your nice and kind way. That's who you're going to be. If you're good with numbers, you're going to be good with numbers in the redemption day. If you have a fantastic, phenomenal memory, you're going to have that memory that will be used for noble causes in days of redemption. You won't change. You won't suddenly be... Shmuel the prophet or King David, you're going to be yourself. Just everything will be good around you. So you need to be who you are and just to spread your good in your circles and one circle will kiss the next and then those circles are growing like one stone that you throw to the lake, to the water and the circles are expanding with no end and that movement never ends. So you and I, we all, must learn how to express the light of Hashem that is shining in our souls, in our inner aspect, in our bodies. How to shine the light that's been treasured from the first six days of creation when our souls have been sent to this physical dark world that is blocking the light of Hashem. And those beams of light that have been sent to this world to illuminate the darkness are our holy souls. Those are the beams of light that are shining the world with good deeds, good actions, with kindness, with good midot with good manners, good behaviors. Just be who we are. That's our only mission. So for that, we must find who we are. 
But, like that I said many times, to find who you are is not the main challenge. The main challenge is after you find who you are, to believe that it's important, to accept it, and to be happy with your share. Because this world is always trying to show us other options. Oh, but you're not famous. Oh, but you're not a billionaire. Oh, but you're not married. You don't have children. You haven't bought a house yet. You haven't completed your aliyah yet. Whatever. You have your dreams. You haven't finished shas. You haven't learned enough. You don't know the holy language. I haven't converted yet. Whatever you have in your sick mind, this is the effect of the evil inclination to destroy your joy and your satisfaction from life. Because you can serve the Creator as a non-Jew that lives in the mountains of Timbuktu. And to be so glad and happy and so close to Him that no one else can reach your level. Like Elijah the Prophet is testifying that you can ha achieve the Divine Spirit to hover on you corresponding to your good deeds, to your good actions. What that matters is your heart, is the intention of your heart. Now you feel not good with yourself because you're not a Jew. And you don't feel good with yourself because you started your tshuva as a Jew only when you were 20 or 40 or 70. But Hashem is waiting for a person to wake up even in the last moment of his life. And it will be considered as a complete tshuva if you will wake up in the last moment of your life and it will be good. You cannot understand the calculations. You cannot understand how Hashem is running the system. Like we said before, we're too distracted. So we think that a lot of money means a lot of money. But maybe only the money that you gave to charity, the money that you used for mitzvot, for good things, this is the money that counts, maybe for an example. And all the money that you have piled and stink in the bank doesn't worth anything and it's a curse on you and not a blessing because there are people that are starving and if you would spread your money those people would be alive so all the fortune that you treasured in your safe is a curse not only on you a curse that is killing others because you're not generous and you're not giving enough and Hashem will argue with you and will fight with you why you were not using the money that He gave you for the purpose that He shown you that that's the purpose what money made for that you saw that money can save lives that you saw that money can pay rent that you saw in your life that when you go to the grocery you also paid and you saw that poor beggar and you saw that homeless and you saw saw that widow and you saw that family that had been kicked out of that house and then from that house and then from that house and you see their kids and you see their faces and you are keep on piling and piling and piling. So where is that blessing exactly? So we don't know the real calculation, the real wisdom of Hashem. But when we are looking deep with brave, strong, brazen eyes into the depths of our emotions, into our thoughts, into our feelings, inside of our true selves, we can recognize everything about ourselves. When I'm asking you a question, you know if you're being honest while answering or if you're a liar when you're lying to me when you're answering. Even if you're afraid, you know that it's because you're afraid. If you're scared, you know it's because you're scared. If you have your reasons and you're being Manipulated. 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 So in that moment, you know that about yourself. You know that you're being sneaky. You know that you try to steal, that you try to twist. You know what you're doing because you are aware to yourself. Now you can deny it. You can say, no, I'm not. No, oh, really, I didn't have a clue. You keep on lying. You're lying to yourself and you know that you're lying. Words of truth are recognizable. You can recognize them. You know the truth about yourself. To know who you are, to know when you're honest, to know when you're lying to yourself, you know. You know exactly who you're scared of, which situation you're terrified from. You know exactly what is the purpose and what are the challenges that you're facing. You know what you desire and you know what will be good for you. But you don't appreciate yourself. 
but you don't give yourself a chance. You keep on letting yourself follow your fears. You let yourself keep following other people's opinions that are setting a certain path for you in life that is not your path. Is not the path that will shine in the light of your soul. You're following your fears instead of following the Creator. The Creator, Hashem Elokechem Emet, is the God of truth. You want to follow Him, you must speak the truth, you must be an honest person. You cannot lie to yourself. If you hate Him, you hate Him. If you love Him, you love Him. You know the truth. If you want to live with Him in the same house, you know it. If you don't want to live with Him in the same house, you know that too. If you're being cruel, vicious, lazy, ungrateful, you know that about yourself. If you're being lazy and you're not willing to change because you're too scared or whatever, you know those things about yourself. The problem is that we're not pushing ourselves into that darkness like the man Moses that went into the darkness, into the clouds, into the truth, no matter how scary it was, no matter how terrified the thunders and the lightnings and the clouds and the boulders were, he went deep into that investigating and observing, looking for the truth because Shama Elohim, God was there. Because you know that Hashem is inside of you and that can give you the power to break all your fears, all your negative patterns that are bringing you to the same humiliations over and over and over, to the same distractions and to the same sorrow and pain and, and sadness and depression and addictions and bad horrible habits that we have. Only the fact that we're not overing overpowering our fears only because that we're not desiring the truth with all of our hearts is leaving us to stay in the other side of the mountain in the side of the fog and the thunders and the boulders and the decrees and the judgments and the exile Moses when he went through that darkness he reached Hashem and then he was in a different place. Suddenly he was in heaven. Suddenly he was talking to the angels. And he was arguing with Hashem. And he had different discussions, different reality. Because he was brave and strong to confront his fears. And not to back off because of negativity and sadness and laziness. He dragged himself out of bed because he wanted to. He respected his wife not because he was afraid that she's going to scream at him. Just because that he realized that it's the right thing to respect a person that lives with you, someone that is doing good things for you. He was a generous person not because he was righteous, just because that he checked, I'm not using that money right now so I can give it to that person. It will be more useful in his hands than in mine if it's lying down in my pocket. He was a man of truth. That's why he was the vessel and the messenger to deliver the voice and the will of the Creator to his people. Because he was a pure and proper vessel to deliver that light. Because he nullified himself to the truth and then the face of God was shining from his face. Because that he became like God. Because who is God? God is the God of truth. Hashem Elokechem Emet. And he was the man of truth. So that's why the Creator's light, light of truth, was found his way out of Moses' mouth, out of Moses' actions. So when we will attach ourselves to the truth, not to the divine, Kabbalistic, secret truth of Moses, no. Not to lie to ourselves from our side, from the side of the clouds, from the side of the boulders, of the lightnings that are hitting and striking you back. Not going to be scared from them, just going to deal with every one of them with faith 
reminding ourselves, no, it's not thunders, it's Hashem. No, it's not darkness, it's Hashem. No, I need to find the truth. No, I need to be honest. And if I feel challenged, I need to pray to Hashem. And if I don't know what to do, I need to wait and I need to pray. And I need to work on myself and I need to check myself. Am I being lazy and that's why I'm suffering? Or maybe it's because that something is going on and there is a different reason. I need to check. Use your mind. Use your talents, use your abilities, use your senses, use your emotions. Don't ignore from your thoughts and your emotions. Be who you are. Listen to your inner voice and follow the voice of truth from within and become the person of God that you are. And then the light will shine from you upon all of your beloved ones and everyone will enjoy your wisdom and your life experience and it will help them to find their way not to follow you to follow their hearts to find the creator within within themselves to become themselves they cannot imitate you like you cannot imitate me like and I, I cannot imitate my rabbi and my rabbi cannot imitate his there's no connection between us except of learning one from each other's life's experience. What have you achieved? Okay, so I can also achieve in my life. I will never be able to be you. You will never be able to be me. Why? Because that's the nature of the world. Hashem made you only who you are that you are no one else the evil inclination the snake is telling you that you could have been an athlete that you could have been a star uh, a superstar in the movies that you could have been a singer that you could have been a model that you could have been a righteous man that you could have been Talmid Chacham that you could have been married to five years ago nonsense you are who Hashem made you to be that's who you are, who Hashem wants you to be. Now, let it shine. Let it glow. Let the light of your soul illuminate from within. Express your goodness. Express the good that God gave you. Be who you are and love and support and heal and listen and do and make changes in this stupid world. Make an effect, affect other people's life with your talent, with your abilities, with your wisdom. If you know how to play basketball, people need you in that field. People need you in that field. If they will see me play basketball, they will all gonna run away. I cannot, how you, how you say that in English? I, I'm, 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 I'm falling on my face if I need to do that. I cannot even express this word without falling on my face. I don't have the ability to communicate with them because they need some basketball player from their life zone that will talk to them. So if you have that ability, you are the messenger of the Creator in that place. If you're an accountant or a lawyer or a doctor, the friends, your colleagues, your company, they will listen to you because you're one of them. And they won't follow me. You know why? Because of my beard, because of my accent, because of my background, because I'm not a doctor. They won't listen to me. And it doesn't make you better than me. It's your job and your position. Shine the light of truth and kindness of Hashem in that place of yours. And be the ambassador of Hashem to deliver the news, the light, the light of redemption, the light of faith in your place. And that's how we all going to bring redemption. When we all going to shine our small light in our own houses and suddenly it's all going to rise. You got it? Very good. Now, when a person feels that he's being rejected, that Hashem is turning away from him, if your purpose, like Moses' purpose, is only really to be honest, to be truthful, to be kind, to be nice, you will always find the kindness of Hashem in those difficulties, in those challenges, in that time that Hashem is hiding His face from you. And usually those times will be more beneficial, more great for you 
than the moments of success and happiness. You will learn more in times of darkness than in the daytime. Okay? Work on your mindset to want only Hashem. And for that we need to have our individual prayer to discuss those issues with Hashem, to talk about those things with ourselves. And a great recommendation to follow my classes on the Amuna.com website, Facebook, Twitter, SoundCloud, and all the rest of those lousy outlets of social media. You can see and enjoy this refreshing and content online, thousands of videos over there. And you can help us as well to spread the good news that Mashiach is walking between us already. And it's time to go. So, amuna.com and the Shem will answer all your prayers and your requests. Amen. Can you We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.